And this is just falls down to the basic female nature across the board. It doesn't matter if they're in charge or not. Once they get fucking mad at you, they get pissed. They never, ever forget it. You know, you could fucking piss off one of these chicks. And six months down the road, she finally gets a chance to fucking get even and fuck you up. She will. Hello everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. And uh, today I'm going to be uh, trying to, well, I'm going to address uh, a question in regards to uh, leadership and friendship. All right, I, I received two or three questions in regards to this, and they're around about asking the same thing. All right, now, there's a lot of issue with uh, thinking that uh, you cannot be friends with your subordinates. And there is a kernel of truth in this. Uh, if your style of leadership is um, very uh, dictatorship kind of, you know, if you say it's my way or the highway, most of the times your subordinates aren't going to respect you and they sure as shit aren't going to like you, so you really don't have to worry about it. <clears throat> now, in my, t in my time and through my experience, there were times where that was necessary but I didn't use it as a primary method of leading my guys. I used, I used to use very uh, democratic uh, method. You know, I would ask my, uh, my guys, you know, what the deal was or, or any ideas of what we had to do. And there were many times where I got great ideas from like the lowest ranking guys. Okay. Because a good idea, you know, has no rank. It's either a good idea or it isn't. Another thing that uh, I did when it, you know, it came to, you know, leading troops is uh, you have to basically lead from the front and by example. Okay, if you could do those two things, your men will respect you, and thing gets everything gets a lot easier. Now, I did have a lot of. Uh, of my former soldiers as friends, and I still have them as friends today. Uh, some of them I even consider m my brothers, all right? You know, I can receive a call from a guy, you know, who lives 500 fucking miles away. I'll jump in my fucking car and roll my ass down there if it's an emergency to help unfuck his life. You know, and I've, I've done that before. <clears throat> now, when you're on the ground and you're, or during an operation, and there's always crazy fucking obstacles or situations are going to come come to pass. All right. And you're instinctively are going to want to favor, you know, your friends, hold them back from, you know, the crazy fucking bullshit. Um, you know, that's not how you should you should roll. OK, um, if you are friends with your troops, they're still your troops. And they still are subject to all of the craziness and dangers that fucking, you know, being in the army entails. Uh, there were many times where, you know, one of my buddies was a squad leader and it was his turn to do some fucked up shit. And I remember, hey, it's your turn. You gotta fucking go do it. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Handle your business. And uh, it worked out pretty good. You know, I, I don't know. Yeah, there was a couple of the times, you know, we, we, you know, I vote, you know, I had guys vote who wanted to do whatever. I mean, that all works. That's all well and good. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, you don't, don't rely on that too much because that requires time. If you don't have the time to do some shit like that, then you just got to do what you got to do. Most of the time, if your time hacks are short, you fall down on the authoritarian kind of uh, leadership style because uh, you don't have time to fuck around. You just got to fucking get it done. Now, in in my travels, especially my last 11 years in the service, uh, I did serve with a lot of females. All right. Now, female leaders 
have a really fucking hard time with this. All right. I saw some female fucking leaders who had, you know, their pets and they never fucking ever did anything uh, with those, their favorite fucking troops. I mean, they didn't do any fucking crazy hard work. There was a lot of favoritism. It caused all kinds of fucking mayhem within their particular sphere. And there was a lot of times where it would be brought to my attention and I would literally have to intercede and unfuck the whole thing. You know, usually there was a lot of crying. People were getting upset and I have to move people to different fucking platoons or, or even send them to different companies, which is considered a, basically a rehabilitative transfer. Okay, well, I don't know why that is. <clears throat> I think it has something to do with women just are over emotional creatures. I don't know. It's either that or, or they live for drama, you know, which is another weird fucking thing that I've seen. And this is just falls down to the basic female nature across the board. It doesn't matter if they're in charge or not. Once they get fucking mad at you, they get pissed, they never ever forget it. You know, you could fucking piss off one of these chicks. And six months down the road, she finally gets a chance to fucking get even and fuck you up. She will. They're very, very vindictive. Being a vindictive person and being in a leadership role is a recipe for fucking disaster. I have seen many, many vindictive female leaders get relieved for fucking cause for doing stupid fucked up shit. All right. Uh, one of them was old Colonel Dina. She got her ass fucking, you know, basically relieved without being relieved uh, for being an absolute fucking shit heel and, uh, you know, just wreaking havoc, you know, amongst the troops, you know. And when, you, when you're a battalion commander and you have four companies below you. Now, a company is roughly anywhere from 60 to 120 people. That's a lot of people whose lives you could fuck up three ways to Sunday. And old Dina, she fucking went out of her way to be a fucking nightmare to everybody but only the smallest of cadre who she favored above all. I was not one of them. So I'm speaking from experience when I tell you that um, when these ladies get into fucking high fucking places of authority, all shit goes fucking, I mean, it just goes crazy, especially, you know, if you rub them the wrong way or you rub them not in the right way and they get, you know, vindictive and upset because they will fuck your shit up or they'll try, which... Dina tried and I outmaneuvered her ass. All right, another f friendship thing. Unlike a lot of the other leaders that I, you know, came across in the army, I actually cared about the health and welfare of my fucking troops. All right, I made it a point to talk to the guys at least once a day. You know, when I was the first sergeant in Iraq, it was very common for me to walk my ass through every single platoon's living area, sit down next to people that were doing their deal and ask fucking questions. And a lot of them revolved around, you know, how's it going? Is there anything I can do to help you out? Is there anything you want to see me um, change? You know, is something bothering you? What, what the fuck? And, you know, I got all kinds of crazy fucking responses. I got responses about guys who just wanted to get an answer to some questions they were asking that were being ignored by the previous chain of command. And they basically looked me in the eye and they said, listen, the answer doesn't have to be something I agree with or even something that I like. I just want to get a fucking answer. And I always went out of my way to make sure if somebody was to bring something to my attention or ask me a fucking question, I gave them a truthful answer and I tried to do it as fast as possible. Okay, and, and another thing is, you know, that really goes a long way, you know, with your fucking troops is, uh, 
you try to get to know their fucking names. You know, I was terrible with names. So everyone got a nickname. But I never forgot the nickname once I gave it to them. You know, I remember doing a roll call over the radio from my platoon back in the day. And I knew all 32 people's fucking nickname. And it, that's the way it was. Because it really goes a long way. If you care about your fucking dudes, okay, and you know their fucking name. So you can look them in the eye, look them in the eye and go, hey man, what's going on with you? You know, call them by name, what the fucking problem is or whatever you want it done, get it done. You know, and uh, <clears throat> another thing about being a good leader you're going to have to fuck people up from time to time because idiots fucking happen. You know, spontaneous stupid does fucking come into play. You know, and you're dealing with a lot of younger-minded individuals from like 18 to 24. You know, they're just they're fucking they're young dick thinkers. They do stupid shit. You got to keep that in the back of your mind when it comes to fucking people up. All right. Now, I Almost never, ever put anything in writing, all right? Because once you put something in writing, it has a bad habit of showing up, you know, 10 to 20 years fucking later. So say I have Joe shit the rag, ba rag bag. He's 20 years old. He's dick thinking. He does some stupid ass shit. And I give him a fucking field grade article 15, and you, they say they're going to keep it at company level, but somebody fucks up and sends it up the chain and it winds up in this permanent fucking file. All right. 15 years later, you know, he's up for first sergeant or sergeant major. They go into his record. They find he was a fucking shit heel when he was fucking 19 or 20 and they deny him the promotion. All right. So basically this individual who was an asshole when he was 20 because he was young and stupid and has a whole boatload of experience is not going to get to share that experience, you know, with the subordinates or other soldiers because Big Army is saying, no, we're not going to promote you because you're an asshole when you're 19. It's fucking stupid. Because the person you are when you're 38 to 40 fucking 5 is not the person you were when you're 19 to fucking 24. Period. You're completely fucking different. So, you know, I would come up with more personal fucking punishment. Like digging holes, cutting wood, you know, building fucking uh, fighting positions. Um, uh, you know, on top of the fucking uh, roof of the fucking prison we're at in Iraq or, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, that is what it is. And, and another thing that goes, that's part of, of being a leader is you have to take the fucking hits. All right. Don't be the guy that when some, something bad fucking happens, you point your finger at a subordinate and go, Hey, it wasn't me. It was fucking him. I'm going to bust his fucking nuts. Don't fucking do that. You know, Colonel Dina did that shit. And it was absolutely fucking disgusting. And I've seen that same fucking poisonous, toxic behavior play out hundreds upon hundreds of times over 30 fucking years. All right. For instance, when I was in Iraq, <clears throat> we were receiving a lot of fucking attacks. And for a short period of time, all of you know midterm leave was shut down. So when they reopened it again, I, I had guys that were flying home. And, you know, had almost no time to react to major fucking events that were taking place in their lives. Like getting married, uh, have, you know, having kids at home. All, I mean, all kinds of crazy shit was going on. And I'd get, the, I'd get the fucking phone call back at my company, CP. You know, hey, first aren't. Listen, my leave got fucked up. You know, I just got married and I have to fucking, you know, be back at the fucking airport and flying back to, you know, uh, you know, Iraq in 36 fucking hours. And I would tell the soldier, I'm like, hey man, this is the way we're going to play it. You got 72 fucking hours and your fucking plane or whatever the fuck it is, is all congested down in fucking Germany. So you can't get back on time. And that's what I would report up to the fucking chain of command up above me. Of course, you know, I'm totally conflating shit, which 
you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that big of a deal because I'm trying to maintain the morale of my guys. And of course, you know, they're fucking breathing down my neck and they're, they're, you know, I'm getting called every name in the book because I can't keep accountability of my men and I need to fucking punish them. All right. So I would, they would come back from wherever they were, you know, three, three and a half days late They'd get back. And then I would take that soldier and myself and we'd go out and dig a fucking dummy hole and, you know, get it over with. And then it would come down from higher that I had to punish them. And I would say I already did, you know, I made them do, you know, company retraining and it's all good to go. And there's really not much more they can do because there's the double, double jeopardy thing. Okay, now on the few times that I actually did fucking paperwork on some of the soldiers, it was usually a counseling you know, statement. I kept it in their file for no more than a fucking year. And if that particular soldier was a rated soldier and then he had his rating period come and go, I would pull the shit out of his fucking file because it's a new rating period and I would give it to the fucking soldier to deal with or do as he wished with it. Because nothing pissed me off more than some of my subordinate leaders maintaining these fucking super secret fucking records on their soldiers for three, four, and five fucking years. So say a soldier fucks up, you go back into his fucking file, you go back three fucking years and pull out some fucking shit to fuck with the guy. I mean, that is absolutely reprehensible. And that's poor leadership right there. All right. As a leader, it is your job to train your subordinates to ultimately do your job. All right. To replace you because you're not going to be there forever. Period. All right. I, that just really fucking aggravated the absolute living shit out of me. Okay, now in Iraq, I had two NCOs who were in my platoon uh, that I started, third platoon back, you know, when it was fucking two fucking people. And I built it back from scratch and then I got moved on to operations and then later became the first sergeant. Okay, now these particular soldiers were earmarked from, you know, the commander for an ass fucking and basically, they were going to get busted one rank and take two months worth of fucking pay and 45 days of extra duty to these two NCOs who were, in my opinion, they were damn fine NCOs. They were more than competent at their job and they were very effective combat leaders. All right. And in my opinion, I thought that was a little overkill. Okay, you know, I can see giving a guy a company grade article 15 and, you know, taking one stripe but suspending it for six months. That means if he fucks up again, then he loses a stripe. If he fucking does his job, and doesn't fuck around, he'll be fine. And I certainly am not going to take money from a soldier uh, if he hasn't destroyed any equipment or, you know, done anything that, uh, you know, warrants you know, taking money from a soldier. All right. Cause they don't get paid enough and what little they do get paid. They fucking need it. All right. So, you know, I was made the first sergeant, the commander that was under me got relieved temporarily. He should have got relieved fucking, you know, for the rest of the deployment to Iraq, but that's another fucking side issue. And, uh, you know, I had told these two NCOs to appeal their fucking Article 15, all right, and they appealed it, and it it, it went all the way, it went for like two two and a half months. Uh, the commander got relieved. The new commander that was filling in for him or who replaced him uh, I, was the Captain uh, Johnson. Was a good guy, you know. Basically, I walked literally. I walked into his fucking you know chew. 20 minutes after the old company commander got relieved, thrown on a truck and sent out to victory. And I said, we need to throw two article 15s in the trash. And he wholeheartedly agreed with me. We walked right up to the battalion commander and said, those two article 15s, which are being appealed, I want them retracted. I'm going to throw them in the fucking trash. And the battalion commander looked at us and said, once these get thrown in the trash, they will never be addressed again. And he said, Roger that. 
in the trash they went. Now, I went back and told these two NCOs that they were not going to lose a fucking stripe and they weren't going to lose two months' pay and there wasn't going to be any extra fucking duty. Not 45 days of it anyway. They were both punished, but they were fucking very close and personal punishments, which lasted maybe, I think, two days at the most, and then it was fucking over. Never to be mentioned again. Until, you know, the company commander... Because, uh, you know, the National Guard Bureau fucking went to bat for him, didn't know how much of a shitbag he was, was brought back to the company, put back in command, and then he wanted these two Article 15s brought back into play, and the battalion commander just told him to fuck off, it's not going to happen. You know, your first sergeant and the company commander who, who replaced you threw him in the fucking, in, in the trash, it's over, I'm not going to fucking go back in my word, and this is not going to fucking happen, which... You know, I have to say that particular battalion commander, Fast Eddie, even though he was a raging asshole and, in my opinion, for the most part incompetent, on that particular day, you know, he stuck to, true to his word and basically told the, you know, old worthless to fuck off. But that's neither here nor there. So those, that's just my take you know, on being a leader of men and having to deal with friendships because, you know, if you're friends with your troops and they respect you, they will do anything you ask them to do. You know, as long as you lead them by example and from the front, okay? They, they literally will do whatever it fucking takes to make, you, make sure you are successful. And at the same time, they themselves will have buckets of glory to their name. Anyway, gentlemen, that's me. Hope you enjoyed that little lecture on friendship and leadership, and maybe you took something away and you're able to fucking help yourself out in your lives. Uh, I do know that I have a lot of individuals who watch my channel who are currently in the military, all branches of the military to include the Coast Guard, and I hope this wisdom rings true for you and it helps you out. With that being said, I'm done here, gentlemen. Talk to you next time.